Live from our studios, just steps from the fabulous Las Vegas Strip, it's The Business Lounge with your host, David Wright. Hi, I'm your host, David Wright, and welcome to The Business Lounge, where we talk to real people about real business and real success. With me today, I have J.C. Lopez. He is the founder, owner of Urban Necessities here in the Las Vegas area. J.C., thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for having me, David. I appreciate it. You know, uh, it was interesting the way we met. Uh, you know, uh, we were over at uh, the mall, standing in line, waiting for a release of uh, a Nike tennis shoe. And through that process, I got a little bit uh, of a sense of who you were. And that's what precipitated me bringing you on the show today. Because it sounded like you were well grounded, not only in your product, but in business principles and you had a vision. So I'd like to Thank talk you. a little bit about that with you today. Okay. So tell us a little bit about who you are in the shop itself. So uh, I'm, a, I'm one of the business owners for Urban Necessities. It's a sneaker consignment shop uh, that we have based out of the Boulevard Mall. Um, and basically what we do is we uh, try to cater to all the collectors and the people that don't really have the time to put in the efforts to grab all these rare releases. Um, the consignment shop is, is set up a little bit different than most consignment shops because of one, the products that we carry, and two, the fees that we charge are less than anybody else doing what we do. Um, our price points are on average about 20 to 30 percent lower than our competitors, so um, what we offer is more for less, and it's been working out great. So help the audience understand a little more about what you do, because you're talking about putting product on consignment, uh, and we'll, we'll talk about a couple of the other things that your shop does too. So I'm a person, and I have a pair of Nikes, and I bring them to you. Take me through the process of uh, what you do then uh, to get those shoes sold. So basically the, the steps that we would do if, if you were the person that bring us the shoes to sell, um, one, we would legit check the shoe to make sure that the authenticity is there and that the shoe is in the condition that um, you state that it's in. After that, we'll go on the internet, look at some of uh, the other reputable websites that are out there, get a gauge of what the pricing of aftermarket would be, which is what we do, because um, it's not like a footlock or anything like that. And um, once we strike an agreement on that, we'll then list it through social media, like on our Facebook page and, and our Instagram page. And we have a website coming within the next couple months also. Okay, so how many uh, people, not, not just pairs, how many people do you typically deal with on a weekly basis? Uh, it's tough to gauge, but I would say on a slow day, we're getting at least 100 people in the shop a day. Um, a busy day is going to be now closer to 300 people a day. So on, so the, on a the Friday, Saturday, it's guaranteed like two, 250, 300 people a day. And this is primarily just word of mouth, right? Right, because uh, we've been open. The 17th will be um, four months we've been open. Uh, we're still not in the directory for the mall. Um, Thank you to the Boulevard Mall for that. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, we're still not in the directory. It's just been all word of mouth. It's been all uh, the efforts that uh, my team and myself have taken uh, through social media. You know, we're open, you know, mall hours. Sometimes we open earlier than what the mall opens and close later than what the mall closes. And I probably invest at least 10 to 12 hours a day on social media. Mm -hmm. um, so that word of mouth has definitely helped us get to where we're at in such a small time. Would you describe your typical client, because you're talking about collectors primarily that are looking for rare or uh, shoes that were released at some former date? Um, yeah, I would say that we, we cater more to the collector um, more than anything else. Uh, and that's what's so unique about the situation that we're in. It's like, yes, we're in a mall, and you would expect the mall to be the ones uh, creating the foot traffic for you, but it's all, again, the word of mouth and that collector that has an appreciation for the time and efforts that we put in to acquire these shoes for them. Uh, you know, our main customer base right now 
it's like it's it's all over the place it's you know we have the kids that are you know are creating this hype and are the ones that are coming in and buying this stuff because it's a sense of need because of what the culture has become and then you also have your your professional people that like your business folks that are your nine to fivers that just don't have the time or effort to put in to acquire these so they're okay with paying the extra to be able to acquire those shoes so you you really provide a shopping service for people then too. Can I come to you and say I have a, a particular shoe or style and you'll go out and track that shoe down yes. for me if it's not there? Yes, definitely. That is a service that we offer as well. We have a wish list um, that we've set up and basically as these shoes come in, our system basically notifies, hey, this person wanted the shoe, so their contact info is all there. We've, we call them, those shoes won't even hit the floor. They'll be sold. and and. And it's not just uh, sneakers that we do this with. It's also clothing. Um, we carry 15 clothing brands in there now. 12 of them are local. And my, my thing was is that what, when I opened the store and was in the process of opening the store, what I wanted to do was to be able to grow with my community. Right? I didn't want to just open up a brick and mortar and just get fat off of the community. Right? I wanted the people that believed in me and supported in me to be able to grow with me as well. So a lot of the brands that we have in the shop um, are local and are first time in boutiques. And for some, it's going great, you know. Um, so we also take clothes on through consignment. And, and the same thing with, for instance, with Akeem and the New Life Kicks, which is the restoral aspect of it, where we provide services where those older shoes, those, those collectible shoes that people have as they wear you know any shoe you wear it's going to get old it's going to get creased they'll fall apart um and i got a guy that's in there and he provides services where he could bring them back to life he does soul swaps um repaints of shoes customs reconstruction of shoes um and that's a service that the community's jumped on and and ran with and it's exciting to see Yep. Uh, the, yeah, when I was through the shop, uh, probably before Christmas, I think I was through there, uh, I, he must have had 15 pair of shoes that he was working on uh, in the shop, restoring shoes and uh, making that whole thing happen. Uh, but I also noticed in your shop that you have some sports memorabilia back yeah, there, too. Yeah, so um, I've, uh, you know, after talking to the team, we've uh, we basically decided that, you know, the consignment aspect of it was working out so why not try everything right so we've literally had you know Super Bowl jerseys signed by the whole entire team um, you know we also do events every last Friday where we um, release a new shirt instead so it's a it's a play on first Friday right so we do last Friday we release a new shirt new hat we have local artists and DJs performing and we do some sort of raffle giveaway so the first one we did, we raffled off a basketball from the 98 NBA All-Star game that was signed by every player from both teams. Um, so, you know, it's, it's cool to see some of the stuff that comes in and some of the things that we're able to do for the community. Um, it's really exciting, you know. Uh, when we were talking just a, a few minutes uh, before we uh, came on the air here, you were talking about... Uh, that you're picking up some major sponsors out there looking to support you going forward. Yeah, it's, uh, it's very preliminary talks, um, but there's a, a very reputable clothing brand that's in the tattoo industry that's interested in, um, in pro placing product in our shop. Um, and I told them I was open to it uh, under two conditions. One, they allow us obviously to pick what items because um, we'd like to think that we're in the know as to what our crowd uh, or our, our fan base or following would want. And two, um, from, a, from a marketing standpoint, these guys um, have a lot of tattoo artists that are under their brand. And um, that's something that we want to dabble in also at the shop. So we kind of want to do a meet and greet, maybe get tattoo artists to come there. But these aren't just run of the mill tattoo artists. These are guys that are have huge followings are booked for months in advance and are from all over the world so to be able to create essentially a hub where we're providing you know tattoos and clothes and sneakers and for the urban culture that's the one-stop shop that everybody 
basically hopes and needs and wants. So it's going great. Good. Uh, along that line about your business growing and, and things really taking off for you, uh, I know for a long time that you had struggled and this is a dream come true. And a lot of times it's hard for entrepreneurs to let go of the reins a little bit. And we were talking about uh, you have a, a unique position on how you hire people. Would you talk about uh, your hiring process a little bit? Yeah, so um, what we're doing is we're going the intern route. Right. Um, we're in the process of interviewing people to, to be a part of Urban Necessities um, on a 90 to 120 day trial period. Um, the reason why I feel like that is because, um, one, from a business standpoint, it allows me to not tie up the funds to be able to do the things that the business needs to stay relevant and to continue to grow at the pace that it is. But two, because when we started this, we started with so little and I honestly feel like it's a privilege to be a part of what we're doing because it's so different than what anybody else is doing. Um, it's not much to ask, in my opinion or my team's opinion, to, to sacrifice 90 days of effort to be a part of this, to essentially be part of something that, when it's all said and done, it's going to be life-changing for all parties involved. You know, you, you had mentioned a really unique aspect uh, to your business. And so much of the time, uh, people are only worried about what they can glean from their business or take from their business. Uh, it sounds like you have a real heart for the community. Yeah, definitely. So, so in, in that heart for the community, where do you see that growing to? Where, and if I was going to interview you in you know, two or three years from now, what would you like to be saying? What would you like to have accomplished? Um, well, for the community, to obviously, to bring jobs to the community, that's one. Uh, I don't think that the lo just the location we have is going to be the only one we're going to have in Vegas. Um, that's one. And two, we're always trying to give back to the community. Um, you know, we have, a, we have a guy, prior to me opening up the shop, like I had literally next to nothing, right? We, uh, um, we had a guy we did a spit handshake with, and he said, hey, we're going to cover your funds to be able to do this. You need to spend X amount of dollars, right? And we kind of were wishful thinking, hey, this guy's going to keep his end of the bargain. And um, he didn't. So basically, my business partner and I started this with $240 and signed the lease with the money that we didn't even, we didn't even have the money for the lease. Um, but uh, so I made, a, uh, I made a post on Instagram on my, not the store's Instagram, but my personal Instagram and said, hey, look, if you have a little bit of time, if you could invest some time, um, come to the shop, help me paint, so on and so forth, right? And I had a guy by the name of Chris. And Chris, I, I, never, I didn't even know the guy. Chris came in and um, he talked to me a little bit about uh, his story and stuff. And, and I told him mine. And Chris got sick uh, while he was there. He was there for no more than 30 minutes. Guy, uh, he left after 30 minutes. He was like, look, I don't feel well. I'll be back. He's gone for three months. Comes back, I find out the guy had like a bone marrow transplant. He fell in a coma, lost a, a bunch of weight. Um, and, uh, you know, what I did for Chris was we, we, well, he started a GoFundMe account, and I've attached that to, like, my Facebook. I've attached that to the Instagram. Uh, we've decided that uh, $2 from every item that we sell goes towards um, Chris's GoFund account. And uh, the, the support from the community has been insane. A lot of people have come in, donated money. A lot of people have bought stuff. You know, and uh, we've only been doing it for two days, and we've generated over $1,500 for his GoFund in two days. So it's really exciting to see some of the stuff that we have the capability of doing for the community. I think to get back to answer your question, in two years, what I'd like to, if we do this again in two years, I'd like to say that I've been able to give somebody a house uh, through some sort of fundraiser at the, show, at, at the shop, and I'd like to say that I've been able to give somebody a car out of that too. And the, and the funds that we raise for this, I want to give that away too. And, and it's not because, um, you know, I'm in a position to do it because I'm probably the brokest person you know. <laughs> uh, but um, it's because no one's using the resources and avenues that they've created for themselves for a greater good, right? And I think that's the biggest thing that has lacks not only in my community, but worldwide. 
um, you know, and I feel like if I if I look out for for basically what I call my people, which is our community, um, you know, the support will continue to be there and we'll grow the way that that we should. That is outstanding. I, I think there is a real lesson, uh, not only for small entrepreneurs in what you've just said, uh, but for larger ones too, especially as they get out towards social media. Uh, the buzz is now social media is profitable, right. but it's only going to be profitable if you do what you said, and that's to build a community that in that community, it not only supports your business, but there's a greater vision for what's happening right. in the uh, uh, community. And I really applaud you for doing that, because that's you. outstanding, man. That is really well, outstanding. You know, uh, my thing is, is we're always going to give giveaways. We, we, we do giveaways every single month. Um, you know, some of these, like, uh, I, I'll wake up in the middle of my sleep and say, hey, this is what we should do. And then I just, you know, I tell my girlfriend, Joni, and stuff, and C's, and I let them figure out the kinks. Um, as to how we're going to make it work. But some of these are head scratchers, man. We're like, these guys are nuts. <laughs> you know, like uh, we did, uh, the first one was the basketball. Right. Right. That was a $3,000 basketball. The guy that won that is from Ohio who came to the shop. And I'd like to say Kevin's probably going to be a, a customer for life. Um, he came into the shop. We went the extra mile for that guy. He, uh, he bought like seven pairs of shoes. He had shoes restored. I noticed that he was going to take a cab back because he was on the strip. We, we took him to his hotel room. I even took him to the airport. Um, you know, and uh, it was cool to see that he won the basketball for like 20 bucks. The second raffle we did, we raffled, we let uh, customers be a part of a raffle and let them take any shoe off the wall. And you've been to the shop. Right. We've got shoes in there that are worth $4,000. You know, and, and it's funny because the guy that won that um, basically turned around and gave us the shoe right back. I was like, hey, sell it for me. Um, so he, he double dipped on that one. Uh, but it, it's just great to see. It's, it's, it's very humbling to see how much support so early on. Um, and and it, I'm very proud to say that uh, I have a great team around me, and I'm, I'm glad we made the sacrifices we did to get here. Cool, cool. So other people watching this may want to start a business of their own. What advice would you give those people looking out there to start a business of their own? Um, just chase whatever your passion is. Uh, don't take no for an answer. Don't look at obstacles as obstacles. Just find it as uh, something motivating you more to find a creative way to get around whatever that obstacle is. There's people that do what I've been doing um, with a lot more you know, greenbacks to make it happen. Um, but I've been very persistent. Stay persistent. Don't take no for an answer. Lose everything before you gain everything. Um, that's what I've noticed. And, and it's, you know, I'm chasing my dream, and it's unreal that I'm able to take so many people with me. That's the exciting part. That, that is outstanding advice, outstanding advice. So uh, where can people find out more about you in the shop let let people know um so you can uh find us on instagram our instagram account is urban underscore necessities or on facebook uh facebook is urban necessities llc and twitter is at the un shop all right cool so that is our show today i hope not only you were informed but you were moved moved by the sacrifices not only he's made to create his business but also the sacrifice he's he's making to empower his community so from the business lounge this is david wright where we talk to real people about real business and real success <laughs>